Welcome to Her Remarkable History. Remember, to support our channel, please subscribe. The Torture of the Man That Slept with Henry VIII's Queen When Anne Boleyn went to the scaffold for her execution inside of the Tower of London, there had already been five men who lost their heads days before on the Tower Hill. She was accused of sleeping with other men, treason and incest, but today she is considered a victim of her husband, King Henry VIII, Anne would lose her head with the French swordsman taking it from her shoulders, but much of the evidence against her was fabricated and made up. But there was one man who was tortured for information after being linked to Anne Boleyn. He was the only one who it's believed was tortured for information by Thomas Cromwell, as what he would say led to the execution of a queen. Mark Smeaton was a musician that was prominent in the court of Henry VIII and inside of the household of Queen Anne Boleyn. He was considered a talented singer and also a handsome musician and dancer, and he moved from Henry VIII's court to Queen Anne Boleyn's. It's not known why he moved, and it may have been on the request of Henry or Anne, but he played many different instruments and also joined a choir which was led by Cardinal Wolsey. Following the Cardinal's fall from grace, he then became a key part of the services inside of the Chapel Royal at Hampton Court, and he would continue to build on his musical talents. It's believed that many women inside of the court found him attractive, and he would later become a groom of the Privy Chamber in 1532. It's believed that Smeaton was never one of the Queen's closest companions, and that she had more favoured attendants and courtiers, as at one point Anne Boleyn would tell him off for the way he spoke to her, but it was clear that Smeaton wanted to climb the social ladder. However, at some point, he became rather unhappy, and he would have then attracted the attention of Queen Anne Boleyn, who sent for him to play at the Virginials. Anne would later say that, On Saturday before May Day, I found him standing in the round window in my chambers of presence, and I asked him why he was so sad, and he answered that it was no matter. She then said, You may not look to have me speak to you, as I should do a nobleman, because you are an inferior person. Smeaton then replied, No, no, madam, a look sufficeth thus fare you well. However, this dismissive conversation between the two would come back to haunt Anne Boleyn and Mark Smeaton. At the time, Henry VIII was looking for ways to get rid of his second wife, and he had his eyes captured by Jane Seymour, one of Anne's ladies-in-waiting. Jane was showered in gifts, and she would show these off in front of her mistress Anne, and this made the Queen intensely jealous and she knew that she was losing her husband to another woman. But it was clear to everyone that Henry VIII wanted to marry Jane Seymour and make her his third wife, and also the fact Anne had not given the king a male heir brought much tension towards her. But Henry VIII then sought to ask Thomas Cromwell, one of the king's chief advisers, to fix him away out of his marriage to Anne, and Cromwell would create a scheme that would see Anne accused of incest, adultery and treason. These charges are based on very little fact, and today Anne is considered a victim of the plotting and someone who was unfairly executed and killed. But the conversation that Mark Smeaton and Anne Boleyn had was reported to Thomas Cromwell, who was in the process of collecting information against Anne to be used against her. Cromwell's ears pricked up when he heard that the pair had spoke, and while nothing at all had come from the conversation, Cromwell would use it as evidence to later sentence the Queen and Smeaton, her loyal musician, to death. Anne would be accused of adultery with Mark Smeaton, and on the 30th of April 1536, Mark Smeaton was sent for by Cromwell, and he was taken to his house in Stepney, and it was a trap. When he arrived, Smeaton suspected nothing, and it was said Cromwell took him by the hand and led him into his chamber, where six men were waiting. Once he was in the room, Cromwell said, Mark, I have wanted to speak to you for some days, and I have had no opportunity till now. Not only I, but many other gentlemen have noticed that you are roughing it very bravely of late. We know that for four months ago you had nothing, for your father has hardly bread to eat, and now you are buying horses and arms, and have made showy devices and liveries such as no lord of rank can excel. Suspicion has arisen, either that you have stolen the money, or that someone had given it to you. With this, 
Cromwell was implying that Anne Boleyn had been purchasing gifts for Smeaton and that he was being showered in gifts in return for sleeping with Henry VIII's queen. Cromwell said, I give you notice that you will have to tell me the truth before you leave here, either by force or goodwill. Smeaton was now cornered and he was frightened and it was said, then he, Cromwell, called two stout young fellows of his and asked for a rope and cuddle and ordered them to pull the rope, which was full of knots round Mark's head and twisted it with the cudgel until Mark cried out. The torture continued and Cromwell inside his house was torturing a man who would be accused of sleeping with the Queen of England. Torture continued until Mark was ready to admit anything, and he was completely broken. It was said that, when the secretary heard it was terror-stricken, and asked Mark if he knew of anyone else besides himself who had relations with the Queen, Mark, to escape further torture, told all that he had seen Master Norris and Bereton, and swore that he knew no more. Then Cromwell wrote a letter to the King, and sent Mark to the Tower." Cromwell would write to King Henry VIII, saying, Your Majesty will recollect that Mark has hardly been in your service four months, and only has one hundred pounds salary, and yet all the court notices his splendour, and that he has spent a large sum for these jousts, all of which has aroused suspicion in the minds of certain gentlemen. And I have examined Mark, who has made the confession which I enclose to Your Majesty in this letter. When Henry VIII read the confession, his stomach was turned, and he was confused and upset, but whilst he was at the Tower of London, Mark Smeaton would confess to being the lover of the Queen, and with this it's believed this confession was extracted using torture devices such as the rack, or the scavenger's daughter. But his confession did not add up. He claimed he was at Greenwich with Anne on a specific date, but she was not there, and the torture replied to him, made him accept anything to make the ordeal and pain stop. Mark Smeaton's arrest was a great scandal, as the thought that the Queen had slept with such a man of low standing was considered shocking. He had been battered with a knotted cord around his eyes at Cromwell's house, and now possibly racked. But the evidence against Mark Smeaton rested on that one conversation he had with Anne and the fact he had confessed under torture. It was a brutal time in history, and his trial occurred at Westminster Hall, but it was just a formality, and he was found guilty, and was sentenced to death on the 17th of May 1536. Four other men accused of being the Queen's lovers were also condemned, including her brother George. He, throughout the trial, had been shackled, and his execution would come shortly after his death sentence. He was led toward Tower Hill, and he was led towards the scaffold, Thousands of people were there to witness his execution. He was led up to the scaffold, and he stumbled back before he said, Masters, I pray you will pray for me, for I have deserved this death. Before an executioner, with an axe, placed him on the block before he swung the axe. Mark Smeaton was the only one of the men who was condemned in the Anne Boleyn affair who was tortured. The four others were implicated based on the fact they had been speaking with the Queen at some point, and it was a shocking moment in history. Days later, Anne Boleyn would be condemned, and she also lost her head inside of the walls of the Tower of London. Thank you for watching, and to support, please subscribe to Her Remarkable History. Thank you.